Um, I think it's absolutely possible that we can have conscious robots, conscious AIs. I don't think it's desirable. Uh, I think we can learn what we want to learn, and which is a lot about the nature of human consciousness with simpler models. Smart tools, yes. But we don't need artificial colleagues because if we really succeeded, then they would be precisely as autonomous as we are. And we're very dangerous. And unless we could be sure that they would have the same opportunities for learning how to behave and what to value in, in culture, um, it, w it would be reckless for us to give them that much autonomy. Given that I'm pessimistic about uh, the safety of conscious AIs, I'm also optimistic about the difficulty of getting there. I don't think we're anywhere close. I don't think it's coming in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years. And I don't think that the wonderful successes of uh, deep learning, uh, machine learning, the latest wave of enthusiasm in AI, that's giving us some great fabrics, but it's not giving us the architectures of conscious agency. Time and memory are the basis of agency, of human life. Learning depends on being able to extract information from your past and apply it in the future. All of life is a matter of exploiting the past to anticipate the present of the future. And the sense of the passage of time is a byproduct of our, of our agency, of the fact that we're evolved to take care of ourselves, to fend off the inexorable demands of the second law of thermodynamics that say that we're going to get ground down to dust eventually. So time matters for us the way it doesn't matter for planets or mountains or the ocean. It matters for living things because their time is limited. Well, one of the hardest lessons to accept is that people that don't agree with you are not flaming idiots. There's something behind what they think that if you don't understand, you're not going to be able to communicate. However gratifying, however satisfying it may be to your uh, sense of righteousness and order, uh, you can't beat people over the head with a logic stick and get them to change their minds. You have to meet them on their own ground, and it's hard work. And it often doesn't, doesn't work, but we just have to keep trying. Belief is not a voluntary act. If I offered you $100 to believe that snow was blue, you couldn't, no way to collect that money, you could pretend. Beliefs are established by our experience and by our interaction with the world. And they can be very hard to dislodge. And it takes a lot of effort to examine and reconsider and particularly to abandon opinions convictions that you've had when you learn that there's alternatives. And I think that one of the hardest tasks a human mind can face is reserving judgment about a conviction that has always seemed to you obvious and thinking about how maybe that might not be right. Well, I think one of the things that I've learned and have made it a big part of my practice in, as a philosopher is you almost never see uh, somebody change their mind because they've been given a formal 
argument with premises and a logical conclusion and it's been just beaten into them, you know, accept this conclusion or die. Uh, that doesn't work. You have to enliven the imagination. You have to sometimes even trick, cajole, seduce people into seeing things in a different way, inverting their view in some way. I think philosophy is not so much a science as, as an art, and it's the art of uh, imagination instruction in a way. I think one of the things I've learned is that when somebody in a class or in an audience says, uh, this may be a dumb question, but it's usually the best question. The experts uh, seldom ask really surprising questions. Um, the undergraduates are great at asking good questions. In fact, one of my sort of maxims over the years is that if you're not teaching undergraduates in philosophy, you're, you're going to get inbred and artifactual. Undergraduates, bold as brass, they ask the good questions. And if you can't explain what you're doing to bright undergraduates, then you don't know what you're doing.